Well, this morning, we are finally back out here on the Columbia River. I'm actually meeting up with my buddy, Andrew. You guys know Andrew. We've smacked walleyes and burbot here several times before. And uh, we decided to meet up at the boat launch instead of going to his house and then hitching a ride with him just because it makes it a little bit easier not having to unload fishing equipment into his truck and then go back to his house and then unloading equipment from his truck back to my car. So I'm here at the boat launch. Uh, he's, he should be here soon, but this is where we are going to be spending our day. So I'm just gonna go back and rig up. That way when he shows up, I can just throw my stuff onto the boat and we're good to go. Need my wallet because my licenses are in there. Throw that right there. Fishing rod. Yeah, I got bottles, hand sanitizer everywhere. Don't mind the mess. Going on big water today, so I'm gonna throw on my PFD. Never be too safe with a life jacket of some sort. Good to go. Fishing rod, bag of equipment. Pretty good. It's running a little late this morning. <laughs> I was running a little late this morning. The water is super low. Usually, usually it's like way up here. Wow. Yeah, look at this. The water is super low. This dock didn't even reach the water. Usually this dock is level with the water, but the thing with Lake Roosevelt is the water fluctuates so much. Usually it's a daily thing. Like if you guys look here, the water is way down here and it can be literally way up here in the middle or as you guys see here way down shallow yeah it seems like you are busy cleaning fish <laughs> just a little hey, man pretty good kai. samong kai thai kai kai -I. I gotcha wow that is ice <laughs> Crazy. Huh. Yeah. I mean, either way, I guess you could say you're feeding them to the bourbon. Feels so good to finally have a fish on. <laughs> Ooh, this feels like a good one. <laughs> How deep are we? Okay, he's a bit ways down there. Oh, that's a good fighter. Never had him fight like this before. Oh, doubled up. Oh, doubled up. Kai's on. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Oh, there he is. Oh. Oh, that's a big in. We'll see what Kai got. Oh, he got one too. Kai's on the board too. There it is. That's something I've been after for like the past three trips. That right there is called the burbot. But my piece of walleye is hanging out of his mouth. Big old freshwater ling, eel pout, whatever you want to call it. Crazy looking fish. All right, let me show you guys what I'm rocking with today. Just got a 2,500 size reel. 10 pound braid as my main line. Seven foot two medium fast action rod and then we're tying or actually i have my braided line tied to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader using a double uni knot and i have probably about a i don't know like a 15 foot leader just because we could be going after walleye later 
and they have pretty good vision so you want to hide that braid from them and then we just have a big old like a one and a half ounce maybe a one and a quarter ounce jig head and then we have a plastic soft plastic crawdad and then we tipped it with some walleye meat that the guys got from yesterday's haul and we're like anywhere from 100 feet to like what 140 feet is that what you said oh 100 140 to 40 feet of water so it's a 100 foot difference depending on where we want to fish and then we're dropping it to the bottom and then we're just like slowly hopping it on the bottom so for example i'm on the bottom right now you guys can see my line of slack all i'm doing reeling in until there's a bit of tension and just hop just a little bit of hop 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 bring it up pause no hit just bring it back down hop 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 and hold that's pretty much the pattern and then typically they'll bite it on the drop or on the pause got him <laughs> on the tail it is a burbot <laughs> oh, dude that's a good burbot it's a really good burbot oh down there buddy's birthday today jason bernhardt that's for him ah oh, yo bernhardt burb <laughs> <laughs> you guys managed to fit 16 walla and 10 burbot in there yep you guys did got him <laughs> Yes, sir. Ah, there we go. Feels like a good urn. Good urn? Yeah. Got, got good weight. <laughs> got good weight to her. That's, a, that's what you always want to feel. Just a heavy, heavy fish. She's not even... Head shaking, it's just dead weight. The oh, there it is, another burb. I'll help you. Oh, there it is. This is a slight downgrade from the one I caught earlier. Still holding your walleye but, now? Yeah, they both uh, are willing to offer me my walleye back. So I'm just gonna pull this right back out. Put it right there for now. And these fish are slimy fish. There it is, another one. Look at that crazy looking fish. So you guys see this little thing? This thing's called a barbel. And supposedly this thing right here has taste buds on it. So when sometimes instead of like coming and biting your lure, they'll just come up and nose it with their barbel and they can taste your bait. All right, well, downsized. This is just a little little marabou jig head is meant for steelhead but figured it'd work for walleye too just tipped it with a little night crawler thing is when you're downsized to a little little jig like this and you're like in 140 feet of water it takes an eternity just to hit bottom Might as well grab it. oh oh he came off <laughs> He was just on there. I was touching my phone. I guess that's what I get. I was like, what the? It's so heavy. All right, change of plans. Went from a little jig to this thing called the bottom bouncer. As you guys can see, we're changing a lot of our tactics just to find these fish. So it's a good idea to come out here prepared or just find yourself a good friend like Andrew and let him prepare everything for you. So with the bottom bouncers, it's basically a trolling rig. So basically we're just letting our line go. And then once we get at the desired depth, then we're just gonna let the boat do its job of just moving us around. And then as the boat moves, that bottom bounce will just move along and hopefully we run across some walleye and they can just bite and let us have some fun.
It's a fish. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> that was way fast. That was like two minutes probably. The bottom bouncer makes them feel way bigger than they are, unless this is a giant. Jeez, how far are they down there? <laughs> oh, that's a good urn. Well, I guess better than nothing. So there's the little rig I just talked about. It's called a bottom bouncer. This is just a little flasher blade. Got the hook and then got a piece of worm on there. Pops right out. That's a walleye. You don't want to lip them because they got sharp teeth. All these fish on here in here are pretty stunted. Would you say so? There's too many of them. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Andrew's hooked up. I just caught one and then shortly after I threw mine in the bucket, Andrew hooked up. I have no idea if I have that fish on. Nope, no fish. <sighs> Got him. Fishing like, how deep are we? Like 140? Yeah, we're like in 130 feet of water. And our line's like a little bit out there because we're trolling. And so it takes a while to get them back to the boat. It's always fun though, because you get to fight them longer. Even though these walleye are just more like dead weight than like fighting. There it is. Well, there's a second walleye. You can, t you can see he's pretty small. And that's the result of having too many fish in one fishery. You have too many fish, then they compete for a very limited amount of food and they don't grow very big. You have 10 people, you give them all a pizza, they grow big and healthy. You split that 10 pizzas to 100 people, you get a bunch of skinny, unhealthy people. Same with the walleye in here. These walleye are overpopulated. Fish and game encourage fishermen to harvest their limits when they have the chance. So even these little guys, they're gonna go in the grease eventually. Just wanted to say that because there are some guys from the Midwest, they see us keep keeping these little guys, but we're talking about two completely different bodies of water and two completely different uh, fisheries here. So that's just a little background on why all we're catching, or at least the majority of the fish we're catching are like these tiny little walleye. Got him that time. <laughs> Good weight, good head shakes. It's always a good sign. That's an improvement. Oh, my bad. Jeez, he engulfed it. You guys can see in there, their swim bladder pops out because they're coming out of the deep. But it's not too big of a concern because we're gonna keep them anyway. get one? So oh yeah, that's one. Oh, there it is. Yes, sir. It's another eye. You got one on you, guy. <laughs> Dude, I see your bites about 10 minutes before you set the hook every time. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. There's a deer crossing the river. It's literally in the middle of the river. That's the shore it came from. It's trying to get over there.
Ooh, it's a good fighter. Dude, it's actually a good fighter. I can't even lift him up. Looks like a burb. It's a burb. Yes, sir. There's a wall, eh? This one's got really good weight to him. Yes, sir. See that? Slowly lifting. It's right there. <laughs> I don't know, probably. Another burb. Back to shore. Finally made it back on shore. As you guys can see. Feels good just to not be doing this on the water the whole time. If you have severe seasickness, even like something as mild as this would not be for you. But luckily I'm all right with this. So I, I don't get affected by this, but the ocean's a completely different thing. My hands are cold. My face is cold, can't really talk. So we're gonna load up and I'll see you guys after we load up. How can you not say yes to a beautiful sunset like that? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. How was fishing? It was good. Yeah? Yeah, that's fun. That's awesome. A little rough for me though. I'm a little too old for that. <laughs> hey, you're still making it through. Wasn't working there for a second. Throw that there. Throw that there. And I'm gonna go use the restroom and back to the boat ramp. Might as well just stop at a local campground and utilize these camping tables so that it just makes my job to process the fish a little bit easier. So. Went to the store just to grab a couple things like my favorite drink to go along with these catch and cooks, just some parsley flakes and just some asparagus. Figured let's eat a little bit healthier today. So we're just gonna take this bag, throw it right there. We might need it for trash. And then I just have everything else in this backpack here. With this towel, we're just gonna dip it right in the water. Just open our towel like that. And we're just gonna place this right under our cutting board. The water and the towel sticks onto the surface a little bit better. So you can see my cutting board has a much grippier surface. So when I'm filleting my fish, it's not moving around. So I forgot a plier and usually when I clean burbot, I like to use pliers because what I'll do if I have a plier is I'll just slit a little slit all around its skin and then I'll just take a plier and just peel off the skin. That's typically the easiest way to clean burbot. However, since I forgot it, uh, we're just going to have to fillet this burbot how we fillet any other fish. So right here, this is where its head meets its back strap. Basically, we're just going to poke down here. Just gonna poke like that and they're kind of like a catfish so we're just gonna follow its back strap essentially or its spine we're just gonna follow it all the way to the other side I'm pretty much doing a, a standard like fillet method it's just that this time it's with the burbot and with burbot, the majority of meat is right here. Once you get to the tail, you can see it's very thin. You don't get a lot over here. I don't typically try to fight for the meat over here because again, the majority of meat's up, up here. Once you get here, then it's just a matter of following the bone and just taking off the meat. It's not a race, so just always take your time. In burbot, they have a very, uh, 
different kind of bone structure i wouldn't say very but just a slightly different bone structure than say like walleye and i'll show you guys here momentarily once i'm done with this so there you go you can see you get the back strap and then you just get the tail over here typically with any other fish what you end up with is you also end up with a little strip of meat right here but with burbot again their structure is a little bit different so i'll show you guys here why any other like fish say panfish what happens is you can fillet their meat over and then once you get under the bones you get a little bit of meat on the underside here too but with burbot their bone right here actually is like an almost like a 90 degrees here it's just like a typical straight wall up here but when you get to these bones right here it like goes out at a 90 degree angle so when you fillet it you have to go straight down and then just straight out the other side and so down here this is what you would uh, consider your belly meat so that's a completely different cut of itself versus the back strap here so all we're doing now is we're just going to do the same thing to the other side to just cut right behind its head and then we're just going to follow this bone right down oh i missed it just gonna follow this bone and again just take your time doing it once you get past the belly poke out your knife and just fillet the meat off the the tail and burbot they're very slimy fish so there we go so again you can see here that's just bone once you get over here then it's just a matter of laying this piece of meat off just did a quick rinse and then now we're just gonna simply fillet the meat off of the skin like how we would do any other fish just put your blade in between the skin and the flesh and just do something like that so there's the skin we're just gonna throw that away there is a boneless and skinless fillet we're just gonna do the same thing to the other side start at the tail and just fillet away boom throw that skin away we've got two beautiful boneless skinless burbot fillets since that part is all disturbed with dirt let's move upstream and just rinse that off as well six asparagus four pieces of burbot Sounds like a decent lunch for me. Next up, we're just gonna connect this to our propane bottle. Get it tight, or snug I should say. Take this piece right here, and there's a little outlet right here, so we're just gonna plug this in. Plug that in. I'll leave that there. All we're gonna do for seasoning is we're just gonna salt it. I didn't even bring pepper. gonna take this butter here and just throw it right in here we're gonna melt that later I'm gonna take our little jar of butter here it's gonna place it right about here actually let's put it down here more heat down here this is pretty much done. Put it on my plate. Look at that. Just gonna leave these two pieces on a little bit longer just because they're thicker than the tail pieces. 
We're just gonna throw some salt on these asparagus. That's it. Just gonna drizzle it over our burbot. The reason why I'm eating this today is because recently I've been eating a little too unhealthy. So I figured, you know what? I need to get back on track and start eating healthy again. That's why I went like this. But yes, I'm still eating a lot of butter if you think about it. But that's besides the point. It's a lot healthier than what I've been eating. But what I want to show people is just more so of the burbot meat because a lot of people don't know what a burbot is. A lot of people consider burbot a, a poor man's lobster. And it's for good reason, but it still resembles more of a fish. I can see how people get the lobster thing, but for me, it's just a fish. Uh, just clean, white, flaky meat. And it's a little bit more hearty than, say, like walleye. Walleye, it's a pretty delicate meat, but burbot, like, if you look at it, I actually have to use a little bit of force and it's still holding on. If that was walleye, it would have just fell apart and broken into two different pieces. But that right there is just burbot with salt and some butter. Let me silent my phone. There we go. Anywho, burbot, it reminds me more of tilapia versus lobster. But there is a resemblance in there. This is my punishment for eating out too much this past couple weeks. So I have to eat really healthy and really plain. Well, now I gotta clean everything. Clean up. Kinda happy that I brought this big old plastic bag. 